G'day, I'm Alan and this is my wife Ruth. Yesterday we completed the latest senior service ready to send to Astia Health and Peter Sinclair Gardens for your viewing. Unfortunately, we had some technical difficulties in recording the service, so you will notice that there is no video of the speaker, but most of you will recognise the voices. Rather than re-record the service, we have opted to go with it as is, but have recorded this short introduction to offset the lack of video. Hopefully we will sort out the problem before next month's service. Hello, I'm Ruth, and I will be doing a welcome announcement, prayer, and leading you in an old hymn accompanied by Alan on his trombone. Thank you, Ruth. <laughs> I'm Alan Howell. This is the uh, older Alan of the two. And I'll be sharing with you a little later the scripture reading which will come from the Psalms. Hello, so, I'm David. And together with this lovely lady, I'll be introducing then singing, if you can handle it, two hymns. I will also be singing the benediction. Hi, I'm Carolyn. I'll be joining David in the two hymns and their introductions. Hello there. Our Tea Gardens Baptist Seniors team welcome you to this service from our lounge rooms to your home. Despite not being able to come into your home and see you all, we do trust that you too are experiencing God's love and peace during this time of restrictions. I have been thinking more and more about my relationship with Jesus, which started back when I was four years of age. Of course, I didn't understand much then, but I did grow up knowing that he loved me very much, knowing what we, that he knew what was best for me and that he would always be with me. Many years have passed, and now I am so glad that I asked him to be the Lord of my life, asking him for his forgiveness of things in my life that have not been his way or his will for me. Would you join with me now in prayer? Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your goodness, mercy and grace. Thank you for this opportunity, although only by technology, to share together in this service. Please bless and guide each one of us as we lead this time of worship, as well as each person who is in their home, listening and watching. And I ask all of this in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. I'm going to sing a hymn now called, Tears So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. This is my testimony and I would love you to join with me in singing and I trust it is your testimony too. <laughs> Thank you 
to Alan Watkinson. Hello to all you folks. We're here with you today. And we've missed you. The circumstances that we're all living in now have been difficult. However, we're here and you can see us. For our Bible reading today, I've chosen a section, three verses from Psalm 95. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The hymn, Mine Eyes Have Seen the Glory of the Coming of the Lord, was composed by Julia Howe, who was born in New York City in 1819. At the outbreak of the American Civil War, she heard the troops singing, John Brown's body lays a mouldering in the grave. She reckoned this rousing anthem deserved better words, and so the battle hymn of the Republic was written. Sing along with us, please. <laughs> Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is tramping out the vintage where the grapes have brought us all. He has loosed the painful lightning of his terrible sweet call. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory. Glory, hallelujah, his truth is marching on. He has sounded forth the trumpet that shall never call retreat. He is sifting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat. Oh, be swift, my soul, to answer him. Be jubilant, my feet, our God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching I came across this um, article uh, recently and uh, I thought you might be interested in it because it, it does um, bring to mind this verse of scripture by St. Peter, uh, taken from the first epistle and chapter four, verse seven, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. I hope, hope you enjoyed the story. Keep Calm and Carry On was a motivational poster produced by the British government in 1939 in preparation for the Second World War. The poster was intended to raise the morale of the British public, threatened with widely predicted mass air attacks on major cities. Although almost two and a half million copies were printed, and although the blitz happened, the poster was hardly ever publicly, publicly displayed and was little known until a copy was rediscovered in 2000. It was thought that only two original copies survived until a collection of 20 was brought, brought into the Antiques Roadshow in 2012 by the daughter of an ex-Royal Observer Corps member. The key Calm and Carry On poster, which you can see to the left of the screen, um, was designed by the Ministry of Information during the period 27th of June to the 6th of July, 1939. It was produced as part of a series of three home publicity posters. Each poster showed the slogan under a representation of a Tudor crown, which was the symbol of the state. 
They were intended to be distributed to strengthen morale in the event of a wartime disaster, such as mass bombing of major cities using high explosive and poison gas, which was widely expected within hours of the outbreak of war. Detailed planning for the posters had arrived in April 1939, and the eventual designs were prepared after meetings between officials from the Ministry of Information and Her Majesty's Treasury on the 26th of June, 1939. And between officials from the Ministry of Information and Her Majesty's Stationery Office on the 27th of June, 1939. Roughs of the poster were completed on the 6th of July, 1939, and the final designs were agreed on the 4th of August, 1939. Printing began on the 23rd of August, 1939, the day that Nazi Germany and the USSR signed the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact. And the posters were ready to be picked up and placed within 24 hours of the outbreak of war. Almost two and a half million copies of Keep Calm and Carry On were printed between the 23rd of August and the 1939 and the 3rd of September that same year. But the poster was not sanctioned for immediate public display. It was instead decided that copies of the poster should remain in cold storage for use after serious air raids. Copies of the Keep Calm and Carry On were retained until April 1940, but stocks were then pulped as part of the wider paper salvage campaign. An October 1940 edition of the Yorkshire Post and Leeds Mercury records the poster as being hung in a shop in Leeds. The remainder of the Ministry of Information Publicity campaign was cancelled in October 1939, following criticism of its cost and impact. Many people claimed not to have seen the posters, while those who did see them regarded them as patronising and divisive. So at this time of COVID-19, I hope you are keeping calm and carrying on with life because that's what uh, the Bible asks you to do. St Peter in that verse says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. God bless you. Abide with me is, is a beautiful hymn assuring us of the Lord's presence through every stage of life. It was written by Henry Francis Light, who was born in Ireland in 1793. He became an Anglican minister and spent most of his ministry in a very damp, cold part of England, and he was greatly beloved. He had a lung condition that turned into tuberculosis. On the afternoon, after he preached his last sermon, he walked and prayed in the wood and the words of Abide With Me were formed in his mind. Let's sing it together. Abide with me, fast for the even time. The dark, the Build have no 
way, and tis no bitterness. Where is death's sting? Where grave thy victory? I triumph still if thou abide with me. Hold thou thy cross before my closing eyes. Shine through the gloom and point me to the sky. Heaven's morning breaks and earth's strange shadow flees. In life, in death, O Lord, abide with me. A long time ago, The Lord commanded Moses to tell Aaron and his sons to use the following words in blessing the people of Israel. So this turns out to be one of the very oldest songs of blessing. <clears throat> Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you Keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Well, that brings to a close our session with you today. It's been a joy and a pleasure for us to put this program, this little service together, and we hope that you will appreciate it. I hope that you'll understand it and that you'll take note of so much that's been said. Ruth's testimony, the singing, the reading from the Word of God. And we simply say to you, we'll close in prayer, but until next time, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the time spent at this stage just to spread your word and to bring joy and comfort to those who see this program. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We ask your blessing upon all of those people in Estia and Peter Sinclair Gardens and wherever you might see or hear this program, we ask that you will give your richest blessing, blessings of health, blessings of joy and satisfaction. And we look forward, Lord, to being able to join together again with these lovely people. And we ask it and we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. We trust that despite the difficulties 
with the technical parts of this service that it has been a blessing to you. We look forward to next month's service and you being able to see us all. May God richly bless you.